Live from our studios in sunny Burbank, California. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome. I'm so sorry we're getting started late, but you know, that's kind of how we roll around here. Uh, welcome everyone to our Carsey blog happy hour and live stream with special guests and trivia. Oh, and I already hear myself in a loop. Live from our yeah. There I was. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We hope you're able to, you know, grab something that makes you happy, any sort of cocktail of choice. I have I have beer in a mason jar with a straw. I don't know if that's <laughs> politically correct or if, if that's frowned upon, but I didn't want to be, I thought it would be weird for me to just be like, Beer can, so I put it in a glass with a straw, and now I can be like, "You've moved up beer. one level in the uh, in the beer consumption uh, category." So, it's absolutely. So, Julie's here. Hey, Jules. I'm glad you're able to stop by. Um, if you're joining us, give us a shout out in the chat box and let us know that you're here and where you're joining us from. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna do some intros. Oh, that's a good reminder for me to turn off my phone. If I could, I have a new phone, so now I just have to figure out how I turn it off. No. Nope. Did you get an Android phone or an iPhone? I did, What'd you get? I did, I did. I got the new Galaxy s 25 g nice um, so i'm still android i have not not made the leap to apple and honestly i probably won't um but this phone is the interface is different enough from my own phone that like everything seems new and i'm still trying to figure things out good times all right so carrie is Hi, here, here. And Carrie is commenting on our most fabulous guests, um, which I will introduce in a moment. But yeah, everybody come on in, grab a snack, settle in, because there's going to be some, some really cool informal chat and trivia. We have Chrissy trivia for you guys today. Um, I will give, it's 717. Um, why don't we do some introductions? I'm, I would like to introduce our guests first and then we can introduce ourselves yeah so special guest number one who is our reoccurring guest and i feel like you know for as long as she's still holed up in the hotel and doesn't have anything better to do <laughs> we should just keep having you on sarah haverstick is the safety advocate for good baby international she is also a child passenger safety technician and she is a stack special uh, safe travel, excuse me, for all children, special needs instructor. Um, and she's been with Evenflow slash Cybex slash Good Baby for how, is it been like seven, eight seven years? Seven years next week. I remember the first wow. time I met you, you were, you were new-ish. Like, I don't know that it was your first week on the job, but you were still pretty new. And I want to say we were in Lake Placid for the Region 2 conference. Yes. Um, um, Maybe. Yeah, well, that would make sense. I think that was that year, too. The very okay. first one I went to was up in Phil or in Pennsylvania at uh, Penn State, actually, which is where my oh, husband went to school. Then, so that, then that's where it was. It was oh. at Penn State. Well, there you go. I knew we it was a Region 2 conference. Yeah. Um, it just, in my mind, it was Lake Placid. But, yeah, and I just knew from, from your very first, like, presentation in front of the whole group, I was like, oh, they got somebody good, like you just, you know, you do, you just have that way with words and you always have, which makes you a fun, chatty, awesome guest for something like happy hour. We'll chat as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to keep joining while I am stuck in the hotel because it's yeah. something very fun to do and social and I don't get to do a lot of social stuff. Yeah. You know what, before we introduce Tammy, why don't you, cause I know everyone is, you know, is, is, just hoping for an update. So if you don't mind, would you give us a brief update on how things are going? We are at day 60 today. 
So wow. Post transplant. Um, the first 100 days, like that's the number that they always look at. Um, so at day 60, we're doing pretty good. I was, I think the last time we talked, I was still in the middle of like this crazy skin rash that is a really common reaction to the transplant, um, but is one that they still have to get under control. So we're, uh, rash is basically all gone. I mean, you can't see my arms cause I'm wearing long sleeves, but rash is basically all gone. So everybody's really happy with that. And now we're weaning off the steroids. So my very uh, poofy face is gonna be happy about weaning off of steroid. Uh, so that's all, you know, all that is going really well. And I don't remember if last time I knew this, I don't remember how long ago it was that we did our last chat, but um, I it had was a more than two weeks ago. Yeah, I had a bone marrow biopsy uh, at day 30 and that came back with no evidence of disease and 100% donor cells, which is what they want to wow. see. I don't Yay. know how on earth they decide. That's amazing. But, I, mean, I guess they didn't know. It's either your cells or it's the donor cells and it was all donor cells. So that's what they want. Uh, so I do another one of those around day 90 uh, and then hopefully get to go home shortly after that. So Shrugging along, feeling really good though. Got my mile and a half in on the treadmill today and learned that the gym at the hotel is by appointment only. So I'm in there by myself, just hanging out on the treadmill for a half hour, which was really fun. So keep doing that and hopefully get to go home soon. Yay. A little birdie told me you got a Peloton. It comes at the end of the month. So if there's any friends on here that have a Peloton, you can find me. I think I did um, BMT Warrior 418 as my little screen name, but uh, a couple other car seat friends and I created a tag. I have no idea what this means because I'm still pretty new to the Peloton world. But uh, if you're on Peloton, we wanted a CPST tag and there really wasn't one that we could find. So it says, oh gosh, and I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, CPST's Ride RF for, for riding rear facing. So look us up and be part of our little CPS tag, I guess. And I don't know what that means, but I'm going to find out soon. So woohoo. <laughs> That almost is enough to make me want a Peloton. Almost. I mean, but. <laughs> social hour on a bike with CPS friends. What can go wrong? Yeah. I would like to say that I have a Peloton. I would never actually use it, but it'd be like cool to say, yeah, I got a Peloton. So <laughs> if it's like any other piece of exercise equipment I've ever owned in my entire life, it becomes a very expensive like coat rack yeah. and you know, wet towel dryer. <laughs> So, totally. but yeah, good for you. Good for you. I'm excited. And I'm, I'm excited for your Peloton to be delivered. Woohoo! All right. Um, I would also like to introduce our next special guest, uh, Ms. Tammy Franks from the National Safety Hello. Council. And Tammy should be no stranger to those of you who have been in the child passenger safety field um, for a while. She has worked in injury prevention for more than 20 years. She is considered a subject matter expert on causes of preventable death at home and on the road. Um, and her current responsibilities at National Safety Council include developing and updating curriculum in partnership with NHTSA and the National Child Passenger Safety Board. Um, prior to joining NSC, Tammy worked at Randall Children's Hospital at Legacy Emanuel in Portland, Oregon, and she was the Child Passenger Safety Coordinator at Randall. So um, thank you so much, Tammy, for joining us. It's really our pleasure to have someone of such a distinguished guest. Goodness, uh, it's just fun to hang out. Amongst <laughs> our little humble <laughs> peasant being selves. Oh, um, but yeah, no. I'm so excited. Just happy that, to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so happy that you said yes. So thanks for taking the plunge, even though you probably had no idea what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> I promise to be reasonably well behaved. <laughs> oh, I don't want that. <laughs> Hopefully you'll come back in future weeks and eventually we will like legit have a Hollywood Squares cast of nine and can, oh, can do cool. Hollywood Squares. Cool. That would be we awesome. We did that for the Lifesavers uh, Mission Critical. There were like nine of us and we took a picture with everybody looking different directions and pointing <laughs> it. It'll probably be one of my most favorite uh, ones ever. So That's yeah, so, so cool. No, in the meantime, we can, do the, we can do the Brady Bunch oh. thing. Yeah, and I can like look up at Heather or, or Sarah. Just don't yeah. make me be Jan, okay? Can I please just not be Jan? <laughs> 
And to add to your Tammy introduction, because uh, her dogs are barking right now, that's why she muted herself. Uh, she is absolutely one of my like hands down favorite people to teach with. Uh, we've gotten to teach a special needs class together. We've gotten to teach at conferences together. It's so, so fun. She's fabulous. For those that don't know mutual. her. The feeling is absolutely mutual. Thank you. But it's still going to be loud here. Hang on. <laughs> Lainey just said she had to do a three for five degree heat today. Oof. Yes, Lainey. Oh, oh my gosh. I, and I'm I'm envisioning what these three seats might be, and I don't want to say them out loud because I don't want to yeah. mm -hmm. this um, for any particular seats. But I know that there's some seats that are worse than others when you're trying to do three across in 105 degree heat. I was, um, I was telling a client today that. Um, that the reduction of the mask rules from the CDC is like a godsend for doing three across in 105 degree heat. Because when you've got, when you're in there with those difficult seats probably, and your glasses are fogging up and you can barely breathe with the hot air, yeah, that's brutal. So yeah, I, uh, as much I'm as I'm sure that's when you mask, go. I'm ready to it's get rid of that work. thing for three across. <laughs> yeah. That's when you just decide it's not going to work. You just yep. need to go buy a bigger car and then come back and see me. Yeah. It was only in the 90s today here, but it's still just with the mask. It was just like, mm, yeah, it's hot. All right. So at least Lainey <laughs> says it was an exact flow and a slim fit three all forward facing, but she's with us on the mask rules. So Judy's yeah. here. And Hi, Judy. Jen Bon Giovanni is here and Carrie is here and I'm sure there's some other people too. So let us know you're here and we'll give you a shout out. Um, and I'm gonna mute, not I'm gonna mute and go dark just for a minute. Um, but then when we come back, um, let's think about if we wanna jump into trivia sooner rather than later. Um, because I feel like trivia is gonna give us a lot of other topics of conversation today. So I'm gonna go dark for a minute. You guys hang out without me, but I'll be right back. For those joining us, um, that was Keisha. Uh, she's a child passenger safety technician instructor and program leader in New York, uh, north of New York City. Um, and she is running our show tonight on our live stream for Car Seat Blog. And I am Darren, and I've been a technician for 20 years now. I was first certified back in 2001 um, when I also took over my local Safe Kids program, uh, which I ran for 10 years, and uh, have also since then um, started Car Seat Blog and Car Seat.org forum. Um, and I will turn it over for an introduction. Oh, uh, we forgot to introduce our drinks as well. So I will do that right now. I am, uh, I splurged. Uh, my sister uh, got me some Weller bourbon. So if you're a bourbon drinker and you can't get a hold of Pappy Van, Van Winkle, uh, Weller is the next best thing. So I, uh, I splurged to have a little bit of that today. So um, not nice. easy. Stuff. Not nearly as expensive as Pappy, but uh, um, I guess if you can't get it, it's the next best thing. So that's way more exciting than my Gatorade, but it's in a fancy glass, so that makes it fancy. <laughs> I have a pretty water bottle. Does that count? Is that it polka does. It, it, does. Ooh, it does. It's very pretty. It, and it, there... Oh well, it's, the carbonation's gone. Normally, it has a little pop um, too, but you know. Whether you're drinking beer out of a mason jar like Keisha or Gatorade or water, um, you know, you could say it's Perrier or something like that. We wouldn't know the difference. So. Um, How about and I will, artisan uh, well water from the right. from Indeed. rural Ohio? How's that? Yeah. Oh, fine vintage from rural Ohio. <laughs> 20 vintage. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, artisan well water from rural Ohio. I have to remember that. Yeah. And last, I but can bring you some to is, um, is Heather, who I will allow to introduce herself before we decide about the trivia. I'm Heather. I have also been a tech for 20 years and an instructor for, um, oh, I don't know. I keep forgetting how long I've been an instructor, 15? I don't know. Um, but I am um, drinking a barefoot spritzer. And I decided to try it. It's the summer red version of the barefoot spritzer. 
Um, and it's actually quite tasty. I taste notes of grapefruit in it. I'm not a big grapefruit fan. When I was growing up, we had grapefruit trees in our backyard and they took up, we had two grapefruit trees and they took up the entire backyard. They were huge. And so we always during the summer had grapefruits. I mean, it just tons and tons and tons of grapefruits. And so my grandmother would like, I lived with my grandmother and she would just pawn them off on neighbors and anybody who wanted a grapefruit got a grapefruit. And she would eat grapefruits all the time. And I would, you know, occasionally, I mean, grapefruit is kind of an adult taste, you know? I mean, I don't think many kids eat grapefruits. So I just never liked it. But now, you know, as an adult, it's kind of a refreshing taste, you know? It's so, but it's like raspberry. It, it shows a raspberry on the, the can, but I, I taste grapefruit in it, so. Is it alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Inquiring oh, mind yes, wants to know. alcoholic. This has been a week, so. Okay. <laughs> All right, you man. <laughs> can't hear they can't hear you. Ask her, if it's some, ask her what she's drinking. Oh, I can tell you what she's drinking. You want to know what you're drinking? <laughs> I want to drink what Jennifer I'll take her drink. Oh, uh, yeah, Jennifer has uh, an Imperial IPA. That's, hey. that's what I'm waiting to have. Waiting for that nice craft no. beer. Mm. When it's allowed. <laughs> Not artisan well water. Well water from Ohio. From when I Ohio? Tam Wood in Ohio. I will Camp have that Tam Wood. Wood. Come to Camp Tam Wood. <laughs> so a lot of places are mind. like notorious for having poor tasting water. Oh, um, and I know Haverstick grew up in in Jersey. I don't know how it was in your part of Jersey, but where my grandmother lived in Lodi. Oh, the water was it like you couldn't even brush your teeth with it. Like that's how Ooh. bad it tasted. And being a like, New York City kid, I, you know, grew up on really good New York City tap water. So Jersey water was just like <laughs> Was it like sulfur water or no, but um Saratoga Springs, where our New York conference is going to be, um in September is famous for their Saratoga spring water, which is horrific. I have never tasted anything so disgusting in my entire life as this spring water. And it has a very metallic taste like blood. So oh, what is it oh. in blood that makes it that? Is it the iron in your in blood that gives it that? Okay, so it's got to be really heavy iron content. Um, but Saratoga is known for their horse races in the summertime. And so a couple years ago, I went and I was with my, uh, my other friend who's from further upstate. And we had our kids with us. And we knew what the deal was with this water, but we didn't tell the kids. Um, so there's this special spot in like the fairgrounds where the spring water comes up and they've like put like a little old fashioned fountain on it. And, you know, and people are drinking the water. So the kids go up and we just kind of wait to see their reaction. And I mean, they were on the verge of vomiting. Oh. And my friend is like, oh, you guys are so dramatic. Like, it's just well water. And um, like, so she took a sip and she was like, oh, my God, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. So I actually did. I, I must have tasted it because I remember that. You get that taste like it tastes like blood. Um, but it is, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has ever drank spring water from Saratoga Springs, New York. But if you haven't, you're not missing anything. Just just don't. You'll regret it. Anyhow, on that happy note, we should play <laughs> trivia. All right. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to ask everyone, if you've not done this with us before, you need to download Kahoot. Kahoot is K-A-H-O-O-T, and it's Kahoot, I'm going to put it in the chat, dot I-T. All right, um, download the Kahoot app, and I'll give everyone a minute to do that, and then I'm going to generate a code for you guys to play our trivia Kahoot. So hang on a second. 
do 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 oh you can hear yep do 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 keisha i'm so, sending you something in the private chat so i want you to look at it sure Ooh, is it a secret can i look you can look too well i want to look <laughs> Is it cat pictures? No. <laughs> I my kitty cats, man. How did you guess that on the first time? What? What did we get on the first time? That Darren guessed that she was sending cat pictures. <laughs> it's always cat pictures. Oh, that's always the answer. <laughs> cat pictures. Yes. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a game pin for Cahoots. And I'm going to put it in, in the chat and I'll tell you what it is. We found a YouTube channel of a family, I believe in Japan, who has 10 white ragdoll cats like my ragdoll cat. Um, and they do, you know, different videos. Like they had them all in in boxes sitting right next to each other, which was hysterical. So, yeah. Like we can't even get two of our cats to look at the camera at the same time, let alone 10. There's okay. A, a really adorable looking cat from the animal rescue where, mind you, during this pandemic, before I got sick, we adopted three animals, one cat and two puppies. It was a crazy year and I was feeling vulnerable and all these sweet animals needed homes. So we were giving them a home. Uh, but they posted, my husband wants me to stop following them on Facebook because I keep, oh, look at this one. But there was one the other day that was a cute little tabby, but it was like black and orange. So it was like <gasps> black and gray tabby. And then its little nose was split and part of it was orange. And it looked like the front legs were both orange and maybe even the tail had some orange. It was the coolest looking coat I've ever seen on a cat. And my husband wanted to go get it for me. <laughs> he was like, we have three cats and two puppies that are making us crazy. We're good. <laughs> All right. You still have another minute or two to get the Kahoot app or go to the Kahoot website and enter the not so secret code that uh, we put into the chat. 822534. If you're in the app, Hit the pin icon in the bottom center of the screen, and that will let you enter the secret code to join our trivia game. So, hey, it's Friday. Hooray. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So I updated one of the questions, but I don't know because I already played the game pin. It'll be interesting to see if if the updated, you know, um, thing works or not. But I see Judy and Darren and Jennifer and Jenny H and Lainey and Carrie and Jules. So if anybody else wants to play trivia, um, please join our Kahoot game. The pin is eight two two. Five three four. You have to download the Kahoot app. Um, but I'll I'll wait and to see if we can get one or two other people to wander in. I feel like we need at least ten people. There we go. We've got Judy. I need at least one more. All right. Jeannie says, "Hold on." Yes, Jeannie, we're holding on for you. And anybody else who wants in, wants to join our Kahoot, just give me a shout out in the chat and we'll wait for you. I was sure trivia would be a lure for at least 20 people. So, so. yes, we definitely um, need 10. We definitely need 10. I agree. Um, I don't know if you can hear the little kahoot. All right, Jess. Jess is in. And if anyone else is trying to load it in addition to Jeannie Payne, 
uh, please let us know in chat and we will hold up for another minute or two until you can get the app or get onto their website to enter the code to join us. Just let us know in the chat and um, we're happy to wait because it's Friday. So. Yes. And, um, and yay for updated seed guidance from the CDC. I think that was welcome news for a lot of people today. So um, what about definitely... all the great information in the hybrid webinars this week? Learning all about the new curriculum or updated uh, curriculum offering. Yes. And, and as a matter of fact, if you want, while we're waiting for a few other people to trickle in, why don't you give us an update on the hybrid curriculum? Because I and just start <laughs> off by saying what it is, because I'm not sure that everyone automatically knows. Yeah, yeah we're about tell. hybrid we have 45 vehicles. minutes and <laughs> please go to cpsboard.org slash hybrid and you can find all kinds of information about the hybrid curriculum and the webinars next week on Tuesday and Thursday. They're the same content, just different days. Uh, we're trying to get be able to answer everybody's questions, but we're kind of releasing some of the um, samples of some of the e-learning modules. The comments have been super great, um, showing you a calendar, um, sample schedule, how we're gonna release the information, like a schedule of the information release. What else did we show? We talked a little bit about the virtual stuff, so I hope that you can join us. How was that? 45 minutes and yeah. 90 seconds. <laughs> awesome. right. Please, please yes. take your lifelong research work and condense it into one slide for our program. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you, Carrie, for the kudos. I, I, uh, I, I hope that you will become less and less skeptical about the hybrid curriculum uh, as we move forward. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's just the possibilities are endless and it's going to be amazing. So, yeah, yes, will I really agree. help probably, us. Sorry, go ahead. So, Jeannie, the PIN oh. is 822-534. I'll type it in it's, again as well. It's going to allow us to really extend our reach and, and get people who can't take the classes during the week or just for you know, location um, that they can't get to a class. Days off work, you know, yep. that gives them the opportunity to get in. Yep, yep. Or instructors, and for instructors who it's not part of their job and they're doing it. <laughs> As, as just because they love it. Uh, we'll keep them engaged too. So it's it's exciting. I was going to say to Julie, yes, we probably do need a curriculum for the baby trend hybrid as well. <laughs> I will not. There are many things that I will take on, Julie. <laughs> we bring it out and make the engineers do it and see if they actually follow the instructions. Yeah. It would be, e you know, that's... It's not even fair because the instructions, you can't follow the instructions and the diagrams are of little help as well. And, and I remember, you know, being in the office with myself and two other instructors and putting, trying to put this thing together. First of all, I wasn't, I didn't have the strength to get the two pieces together. I needed to make the guy do it. Um, and then having an understanding that it was long bell path routing, which is fine because we've had other products with long bell path routing in the past. And I understand the concept of long bell path routing. Um, but, you know, like literally reading the words and looking at the diagram, it, it took us 45 minutes, the three of us working together until we were absolutely sure that we had it right. Um, and then I made a video, which is on YouTube. Um, I, I may have eventually disabled the comments. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look um, because the comments were just, yeah, they were interesting because, you know, people were understandably angry after watching the video. <laughs> I was like, don't shoot the messenger. All right. I think we have everyone in. We've got Jeannie and Jess M and Judy and Jennifer and another Judy and Jenny H, Heather, Laney, Carrie and Jules. So we've got 10 and it's basically last call for anyone who wants to join us for trivia. So um, please, you know. Oh wait, wait, do we have Judy with a Y? We do, we have Judy with an I and Judy with a Y and they're both logged into Kahoot right now. So I think we've Judy? got, I think we've got both Judy's. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to get started. Let me share my screen. 
if it's my Judy, you better watch out, Judy. Other Judy. <laughs> <laughs> she's competitive <laughs> oh well then i'll claim the judy with an eye she's an oregonian <laughs> oh there she is judy mata <laughs> oh there's a lot of stuff going on here hold on nope hang on <laughs> stop sharing all right it's this screen that i want one sec in your share. share screen. Thanks, Judy, right. with an eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, do you see the purple screen? Now, yeah. I think if you haven't played mm -hmm. Kahoot before, um, I have, at least I believe, I enabled the answers to appear on your mobile devices. So you should see the question and the answer. Oh, and we got one more person. All right. Oh, Darren is back. Darren and Heather um, are not eligible for prizes. We are going to have um, a simple prize, but of a $20 Amazon gift card for whomever wins our Kahoot. So, because, you know you got to give people a reason to be competitive or not. But if you can all see the purple screen, I'm going to hit start. And then basically the way it works is the question will pop up. Some of the questions will be multiple choice. Some will be true, false. Um, not only is the correct answer important, but the time in which you take to answer it. Everyone's going to have 30 seconds. There is a little bit of a delay. So you're really actually going to have probably closer to 20 seconds to answer each question. But if three people answer the same question correctly and one of the three per people answer it more quickly than the other two, then that person is going to accumulate more points. So time is of the essence and so is the correct answer. And with that, we will get started with our Cursey blog trivia. Which of these is not an all-in-one? Is it the Evenflow Every Kid, the Nuna Exec, the Maxi Cozy Magellan, or the Baby Trend Trooper? Which is not an all-in-one product? I feel like this needs theme music or something. There is it. a little bit of background music, but I don't know if you can hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm nominating Sarah. For what? <laughs> Making you don't want me to sing music. <laughs> <laughs> People will jump off real fast. <laughs> All right. So most of you got the correct answer, which is the Baby Trend Trooper. The Baby Trend Trooper is not an all-in-one, although um, the Baby Trend Trooper is advertised as a three-in-one. Hold on one sec. Let me just go back here. Um, <laughs> which, which is rather annoying, um, to put it mildly, because, you know, I feel like it's misleading advertising to say something is a three in one when it's literally just a convertible. It's not even like other products which claim to be three in ones because they're combination seats that are forward facing with harness, high back booster, backless booster. Um, the Trooper is a legit just convertible rear-facing, forward-facing, but they call it a three-in-one because it's rear-facing for babies up to 18 <laughs> pounds, and then it's rear-facing for toddlers up to 40 pounds, and then it's forward-facing. Um, They're not the only that, ones to do that. But I think uh, there, I can't think of any other manufacturer who has done that with a convertible. Right. No, I'll give you that. The There's other product that I can think of at least was an all-in-one. It was not a five-in-one, but it was at least an all-in-one. You know, this is claiming three modes when it's really just two. There's a couple of four-in-ones right now that you Correct, that are also... Similar language. <laughs> yes. I can't, I can't ever make promises yes. for how we're going to name something down the road, but at this point... <laughs> <laughs> is pretty set on we will call it a mode if it's actually a mode so if it's rear facing if it's forward facing and then either of the booster modes at this point that's how our naming convention stands and i'm crossing my fingers that's how we stay 
Yeah. We should definitely um, trademark I'm... like the nine in one car seat just to get ahead of the ball. <laughs> when we laugh, somebody will. <laughs> yeah. Probably um, already been done by uh, the already that has been mentioned. So, yeah, it's honestly really NHTSA needs to step in. You know, ultimately, NHTSA needs to do something about all this crazy marketing stuff that you can just say anything and it's really just sort of meaningless. Um, because there's so much confusion, so much consumer confusion. And this is this stuff is so hard already. Let's not make it any harder than it needs to be on parents and caregivers. There's so much like legitimate sources of confusion. Let's not add to that um, really for no good reason other than you want to claim that your product does three things when it doesn't. Um, you know, and I think Europe is a good example of how everything is, you know, group one, group two, group three. And it's really clear to consumers what this what this product does and doesn't do. So Nissa, you you're listening. Lainey said she wanted me to sing Jeopardy. And I just wanted to say when we were, you know, backstage before we started the live, I said, this is how much I love you guys. I'm missing Jeopardy tonight. And Jeopardy's a big deal in my world. It's actually on right now. So this is how much I love everybody here. <laughs> and we appreciate not, that. We really do. <laughs> You know, and I hope you're at least taping Jeopardy so you can watch it later. I mean, the hotel TV does not have a DVR. <laughs> oh, that's awful. We're I'm so sorry. Happy. It's okay. Um, all right. So anyhow, I think we're ready to move to our next question. Let's see who got that right. We have Jules, Jennifer, Carrie, Laney, and Jess M basically all in the lead. All right. True or false? Maxi Cozy Pure Cozy covers are free of added chemical flame retardants. True or false? I forgot to remind you to add the option to include the question, so I'm glad you did. Yes. Um, yes, I'm glad I remembered too. All right, so this is true. All Maxi Cozy Pure Cozy covers are free of added chemical flame retardants. And the fabric is not, um, it's not wool. Um, it is sort of a proprietary blend. Um, they're doing, I believe, I mean, I could be wrong. So, I mean, if you're a Maxi Cozy person and I'm wrong, please don't shoot me. Um, but I believe it's just one of those knit fabrics that's so tightly knit that it just doesn't burn. Um, it's definitely not wool, but yeah, Maxi Cozy has a, a whole line of um, Pure Cozy covers, which is just one more manufacturer going that route. All right, let's see. All right, Jules, Jennifer, Laney in the lead for the moment. Which car seat manufacturer has producing car seats the longest? Producing car seats the longest. We just noticed you can see people answering on the screen. Yes. Ooh. And I if everybody it's answers, taking a lot longer to answer this one. A hard one. No, no. Okay. So um, the answer is Durrell Costco, as far as we know. Um, I was also trying to give credit for anyone who said even flow. Um, and that was what I was working on trying to do before we started, because there's some controversy as to, because even flow, well, Sarah, why don't you explain it a little better? Sure. Uh, well, even flow has been producing juvenile products for a hundred years now. Our 100th anniversary was last year. Uh, so manufacturing juvenile products in the U.S. Pretty cool thing. Um, obviously not making car seats for a hundred years because that wasn't a thing a hundred years ago. But um, according to, I was quick texting with some folks beforehand when I knew this was one of the questions because we were all like, oh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so we did have some brands that we had acquired in the 60s and 70s that we were manufacturing. They just weren't being manufactured under the Evenflow name. So, you know, it might be us, it might be Darrell. I think we've all been around for a while. So yay for all of us. <laughs> Agreed. 
Agreed. Um, and I, I put Durrell because I know that Durrell was manufacturing under the Costco brand um, as far back as the early 70s. And so that's why I originally gave credit to Durrell. Although if you guessed Evenflow, you probably weren't wrong and you probably weren't that far off. And I tried to give you credit for it, but it didn't work out. So sorry. I did I find... I look back in my safety belt safe archives and see mm. what those look like. I did find an image of a Costco seat from 1970. It looked more like a booster. There was no harness, but it did appear to be a dedicated, you know, car seat function, you know, because um, you, know, you don't necessarily need to restrain that baby, but you need to put that baby high enough to see out the car window, I guess. So exactly. Like in 1970, and, that was a good thing. And you know what I went to? We actually have a blog. Um, when Darren and I went to Durrell way back in like 2011 or something like that, um, and we got the grand tour and they spent the day with us and we wrote a blog about it and we took all, I don't know if Darren remembers, but there was a whole section a museum of museum section, yeah. Yes, that had all their products and we took pictures of them and we posted them on the blog. And so that's what I was able to go back to and I could see things because there was a bunch of Peterson stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, but then yeah. there was something that was Costco branded from 1972. Um, but yes, both Evenflow. Um, and so, Sarah, beside, was there somebody else besides Jerry that you were manufacturing for way back when? Yeah, um, that's what I'm trying to look up. I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> like Can't Wet was one. Of them. I can't remember if that was really or if that was a brand name. That's what I'm trying to look up. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely before my time. Like, even like before my lifetime. I was going to say, way before my time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm relying on safety belt safe, but apparently what I have it only goes to 1981. So I'll keep looking. Okay. All right. So let's see. How does that shake things up? So right now, Lainey's in the lead with Jennifer right behind her and Jules in third place. This is a double points question. Where do you check for car seat installation tightness? Is it at the top of the car seat, at the edge of the car seat, at the bell path, or just grab the whole damn thing and shake it? <laughs> green, <laughs> green, green. And it didn't say damn, but I just needed to add that in for a theatrical effect. You know what, when I have clients and, you know, of course I demonstrate how to actually do it and then, they just shake the whole darn thing to, to try to repeat what I've done. <laughs> like, okay. Our customer right, service so team spends a lot of time educating about this. Yes. All right. So most of you got the correct answer, which is at the belt path. And that was a double points question. So that Lainey stays in the lead with Jennifer and then Jules in third place. All right, true or false, a belt positioning booster seat secured with latch should not move more than one inch at the belt path. Keisha, the next time I have to come up with CEU questions for a webinar, I'm, I'm calling you, I'm telling you. That's fine. Oh, that's so, so many of these things, I mean, because this is our third one and each one is 20 questions. So. At the, and I made one for my CEU update class. So I have at least 80 trivia questions at wow. this point. We should get CEUs for these trivia contests. I right agree. Yeah. I agree. So there was no fooling this crowd. Um, but it is a common misconception, even amongst some CPS technicians, that when you're securing a booster seat with latch, you're really just securing it. it you're not installing it. Um, so the one-inch rule uh, does not apply to boosters. Incidentally, I'm in 11th place, 3,089 points behind Heather. <laughs> oh, geez. That's what I was last. All okay, right. Lainey, Jennifer, off. and Jules uh, retain the lead. What is the minimum age and weight listed by most manufacturers for kids to use a booster seat? Is it 5 and 50, 4 and 40, 3 and 30, or 6 and 40? 
Related to the last question, Jenny mentioned that there's a TikTok video going around where some guy loosely installs a Graco car seat and then like flips it upside down and talks about how it's unsafe. And I did see that yesterday. Hot mess. But you know what's more important is all the money he's making off of TikTok for all the people who are watching that video. All right. So well, the correct answer is 440. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I was going to say he's probably making pennies if it's anything like what my husband makes. <laughs> so, so no, your husband is a TikTok star, Heather. I mean, like, he you is. know, he yeah. is a TikTok star. So you have to tell them a little bit about your husband's um, foray into TikTok yeah. and what his name is so they can all follow him too. Yes, he's he's legal dad. Le did that come out? Legal dad? I need a drink. Legal dad. <laughs> I need I need I need some drinks. Yeah. No, he's legal dad. <laughs> And um, yeah, no, he's an accidental t TikTok star. And <laughs> one of his most um, favorite or liked videos that he has, I, I kid you not, is we were in um, Tempe last two weeks ago picking up my daughter from school. And we were at a, a favorite pizza place. And it was, she picked up his, um, phone and filmed him the door said use the other door you know what the signage says when it says use the other door filmed him going in you know kind of going in between the two doors of do not use these doors and that's his most liked video of all time <laughs> eight seconds of tiktok video of him not being able to get out of the door um, but no, he usually talks about like legal things. Just, you know, I don't even know how long TikTok videos are. I mean, I'm not into TikTok. So 60 seconds and he talks um, about election issues, that kind of stuff. So, Can he talk about how we're going to get sued for that last question about who's been making car seats the longest for someone who doesn't <laughs> win the trivia contest? <laughs> Somebody who got robbed because Keisha tried to edit. And yeah. it didn't work. I was trying to give trying to give credit for either answer, but it didn't work out. Okay, so um, let's put in the disclaimer. Disclaimer asterisk. All answers <laughs> are determined by whatever Keisha thought was the correct answer at the time that the <laughs> trivia contest was made. Any other answers, correct or incorrect, may not actually be the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. But I have Tammy, who's a nationally recognized expert on this, you know, live stream. So I feel like Tammy lends legitimacy to any of my answers. Yeah. Wow. So wow. Tammy's like, Tammy's like oh, Whoa. no. What did I that that <laughs> <laughs> but can we please just discuss this 4 and 40 thing? Darren, why don't you discuss this 4 and 40 thing? So, you know, it's not unlike the rear facing graduation quote unquote type of thing to where you know we had been promoting extended rear facing for a long time the study came out um and said rear facing was five times safer and you know then you know there there was some evidence that we thought at the time that two years was a good transition point and then it became as long as possible so people started saying oh no it should be three years or it should be four years and if you don't go that long your child is in a death trap and and so everyone is, you know, now posting, you know, rear facing until they're driving. And if you don't do that, you know, your child is unsafe and you're a bad parent. And then uh, years later, you know, a few years ago, we learned out, learned that that one singular study we had with some data on the topic comparing rear facing to forward facing for kids 12 to 23 months old was flawed. And it turns out there's so few severe and fatal um, crashes for that age group to compare rear facing to forward facing that there just isn't enough significant um, data points to make a conclusion. So the ultimate conclusion was both are very safe. Yes, we still believe rear facing is safer. Um, and this kind of translates to the same question with boosters. You know, for many years, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and Partners for Child Passenger Safety did all sorts of compelling research on how 
um, booster seats are safe and effective and very protective for children four to seven years old, um, you know, promoting boosters. And, you know, uh, it's kind of uh, now evolved that, um, you know, some, I think is that the CDC started saying five years was the minimum. There are other organizations that may be five years or more because we all know it really comes down to maturity of the child. If you have a super squirmy six-year-old that's all over the place compared to maybe a four-year and 40-pound child who's mature enough to remain seated properly in that booster, you know, um, there's, you know, that four and 40 child may be better off in a booster than the six-year-old child. But, um, you know, we have a lot of advocates, you know, who are telling people, you know, your child must be in that five-point harness forward-facing seat until they're seven or eight years old and you can't do the booster. So, you know, we see it on, you know, um, page questions and Facebook groups and other social media where, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about, um, you know, what minimum is kind of a loaded word, but, you know, four and 40 years, four, four, four years old and 40 pounds is a very, you know, a reasonable starting point. Um, we know it's protective. There have been studies showing children are safe in boosters at that point. Um, is there a safer option? There's not a lot of data to say if five or six years old is the safer choice. We think it is, but you know, there just isn't data. So yeah, there's a, a lot of information and misinformation out there on the, the minimum booster seat age and weight. And I think you know, it comes down to what we talk about in the technician curriculum a lot, and especially now, um, in the real world, it's you got to remember good, better, best. And you got to remember that, as Darren said, booster seats are very protective for kids. So even if it might not be what you would do with your child, uh, if it works for that family and it meets that family where they are and the child is not breaking a law and is using a product within what that manufacturer's guidance says, you know, that's a good option for them and it will keep them safer than misusing another product or not using anything at all. Well said. I think, yeah. you know, the, the difference we try to point out sometimes is that, you know, we have parents, you know, saying forward facing that, you know, uh, 18 month old, 25 pound child is unsafe or death trap or whatever loaded words they want to use. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, is correctly, you know, used and installed um, according to manufacturer's instructions and state laws. Um, that is a safe option if mm -hmm. it's permitted by the manuals and state law. Um, there may be a safer option, uh, which is rear facing. Um, so, you know, try to point out the difference between safe and safer or good, better, best, not bad equals death trap versus good. Yeah. Yep. And I yep. just want to add a little bit to that is that uh, things, especially on the internet, if something gets repeated often enough, <laughs> then it somehow turns into a fact. Um, and then it's a fact that everyone repeats as a fact. And I think we, it's, we, it's important to draw the distinction to say, well, you know, your four and a half year old who weighs 40 something pounds, you know, because basically what happens is somebody posts a picture of their kid in a booster and it's like, you know, is this okay? And then everyone piles on to say, no, it's not. Yeah. And, you know, and that's just not fair to the parent um, because it, is a safe option and it's fine to inform them of what their other options are but don't unequivocally state that their child cannot be in a booster until they're five or six unless you know the manufacturer of the car seat says otherwise so four and 40 i mean is the answer regardless of what other people want the answer to be the answer is still four and 40 and i'm just happy that it's not three and 30 anymore um so I feel like we're making progress and I feel like it is a reasonable option for some four-year-olds. And again, I mean, if we could just educate the parents on pros and cons, so this is the pro and the con of, you know, putting your kid in a booster at this age. These are the pros and cons of, you know, maybe continuing to use the harness seat if your kid still fits in it. But for someone who's already bought the product, it's different when someone is saying, what should I buy? I'm looking for recommendations. But when someone has already bought a product and is now just looking for someone to double check, be a second set of eyes, hey, I want to make sure I didn't screw this up, you're not doing, you're doing a disservice by telling the parent that they bought the wrong product when in fact they did not buy the wrong product. 
Yep. And I think most of the people who are live streaming with us or preaching to the choir, but for the people yeah. who may watch this on YouTube later to learn a thing or two, you know, it, it a lot of times it comes down to not necessarily that what you're saying to that parent is wrong, but the way you are saying it to the parent is giving the wrong message. Um, you know, it all comes down to, you know, how politely you are able to give them the information to whether they'll be receptive to it or not. Yep. Agreed. Um, yep. All right, I'm going to move on. Let's Excellent. see. Where's our scoreboard right now? So still Lainey, Jennifer, and Jules, but one double points question could change all that. True or false? Sensor safe technology can alert you if the child unbuckles the chest clip. Is this one double points? No. Okay. <laughs> Can I give a little teaser when we go through the answer? Sure. Take it away, Sarah. You got this one. <laughs> All right. Look and that is true. So go uh, ahead, share. What do you want to share? Well, so sensor safe, obviously, everybody on here knows what this is, but it's technology we have with some even flow and Cybex car seats. Uh, does tell you if the chest clip is unbuckled. It gives you a reminder when the child is in the car. So hopefully preventing some of those vehicular hyperthermia cases that we talk about every summer um, and really could happen throughout the year. But I can't tell you exactly what the update is. But I'll give you a teaser. <laughs> we have some updates coming to Sensor Safe, and from the very beginning, like we launched this technology, I think almost six years ago now. Uh, and from the beginning, I said, you know, the cool thing about technology is we can make updates as we go. And we've learned a lot from folks out in the field that are actually using the product. I mean, obviously, we did a lot of field testing before we ever went live with it, but you learn a lot more when it really gets out there and people are actually using it and coming to you with questions and uh, compatibilities and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's a really exciting update. I'll start talking about it with technicians a little bit later this summer. It will make it a little easier to use. It will make it more compatible in some situations where we've had some vehicle incompatibilities. Uh, we won't have to qualify with specific vehicle model years anymore. So it could be compatible oh. with any model year vehicle or right. Heather Tesla, which it isn't right now. Uh, so cool things happening. And I have a meeting on Monday that I'm so excited about because other, I mean, it's it, it integrated with an app too. And that's what I've been saying the whole time. There's really cool things we can do in an app and you can push app updates with frequency. I mean, we can make updates and we can make it even more functional for that end user. And of course, you know, in a role for advocacy, all I really care about is people understand how to use the product. And we make this in a way that people can actually understand and use it. Uh, so super excited. Yay. More to come later. That's fabulous. Do you remember the look on my face when we were all sitting around and I, we, I don't remember where we were, but we were all together and the conversation was censor safe. And then the word dongle was being used. And I was like, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> what? what? I what didn't just call it? it that. It, it's and, called the receiver plug. And when people use the word dongle, I laugh too. It's a ridiculous <laughs> word. I was like, I had never heard that word before. And I, I could only assume that you were talking about the receiver plug, but I'm pretty sure I like had to stop and ask for clarification. Like, I'm sorry, what did you just call it? Uh, and I just so think that that, that is the most ridiculous word. A yeah. You should have had to quickly go to Urban Dictionary to <laughs> check to see what you were getting into. <laughs> You know, I haven't done that, but now I might have to because I feel like there is, you know, probably some alternate meaning that, um, but yeah, I, I just thought it was such a funny, silly word and I couldn't believe that it was a real word. Um, it's not what yeah. we call it in instructions. <laughs> All right, I'm moving along here. Good idea. So Jennifer has a streak of not seven. Streak. And she is quickly catching up to Lainey. So let's oh. see what happens. Good job, Jennifer. What am I? <laughs> You're so creative, Keisha. <laughs> we 
we should hire I'm you. I'm glad somebody appreciates it. <laughs> I, I think there's at least one on there that you need to, again, get a quick trademark on. Trademark on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone got it right. It's Wavy Pico. Okay, scoreboard hasn't changed much. True or false? Children with special health care needs must always use a specially designed child restraint. I'm watching this one closely because I think there are many people on this call. <laughs> <laughs> hospital folks that I've been uh, that I've taught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As Tammy gets out her notepad to start writing. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, no surprise that this crowd all knew that, you know, whenever a conventional seat, the wording on the old quiz was, you know, it was like, when when a conventional seat will not meet the child's needs, then you've got to look elsewhere. Um, but whenever a conventional seat is an option, it's the better option. It's the more it's the more affordable option. Um, and there's frequently no reason for a child with special health care need to ride in a specifically in a special needs car seat. What I have seen lately, though is this tendency to want to recommend special needs car seats for kids, younger kids who aren't ready for boosters yet. And I have some reservations about that, not just because the seats are so pricey, um, but recommending a special needs seat for a neurotypical three or four year old who just happens to be very close to or over 65 pounds um, I'm not sure that that's really a great idea. I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. I'm gonna let Tammy jump in with that one. That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to happy hour. <laughs> I, I needed that disclaimer, the waiver form here. Um, you know, I think Keisha, I think there's, I think the harder the harder issue is when we think about um, when there's nothing else that would meet their needs. And so, but who's funding it? Because it can get very expensive, very pricey, very quickly. Um, so you know, it goes back to that good, better, and best, um, and having having the kids use or you know, have, working with the families to find those solutions and remembering that the choice that the family may make may not be the same decision that you would make. Yes. I think selling restraint manufacturers to what people need. You know, I think yes. all of our companies try to figure out where are the gaps in the marketplace uh, and where is the product that's going to meet a need that isn't already being addressed by a different product. Um, you know, I think there are certainly kids who are not, you know, to the point, the conversation we had earlier about four and 40 pounds, booster seats are about maturity. And there's certainly kids that are going to max out the conventional harnessed five point harnessed restraint before they really are mature enough for that booster seat. And we are missing products there, but I think people need to call their car seat manufacturers and tell them that too. You know, I think there's some of us that know, but I think hearing it through customer service, I think hearing it on a social media page from that car seat manufacturer or via their chat on their, you know, most of us have live chat and things that you can do if you don't want to pick up the phone and call customer service. I think hearing it in different avenues and not always just through the advocates who are like, Hey, we want this. And, you know, we talked about the last time car seat testing is really expensive and there's always that cost benefit analysis that a company is going to do. But I think the more the conventional restraint manufacturers hear about what the needs are, maybe something can be done. You know, maybe some company will step up and address that. Well, on the flip side too, Sarah, I think um, often we have to put children who have special needs in that could be using a conventional seat, we have to consider a specialized seat for them because that's the only thing that you can get funded for the family. And yeah. so where you have a $150 solution, but nobody has the funds to pay for it, 
But if you go through insurance and you can get that $700 seat, you know, again, is that the right thing? So, you know, advocating for the children with special needs and the insurance and the insurance systems and the funding um, yeah. as well. Yeah. And Carrie says she agrees, she agrees, she agrees. As a matter of fact, I think I can share her comment. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, hold on. Wait, there we go. Um, I've put older, complex kids in conventional seats, but I've also put young, small, petite, light, heavy for age kids in adaptive seats because it was the best option for that child and family. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely, you know, this is an area we are now missing products. It is a, a niche if somebody wanted to jump into that. It is just, I understand the challenges because of that cost benefit analysis. It's just, you know, what percentage of the kids really need seats above 65 pounds and it's a pretty small majority of neurotypical kids, but they still exist. Mm -hmm. And it sucks to be the parent of one of those kids. Mm -hmm. yep. right. They need help advocating at all levels. Agreed. Okay, well, everyone got that question right. So Tammy need not be hyperventilating into a paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Now so. I have an understanding, so if you invite me back, I know what I'll be agreeing to. <laughs> Folks, this is, we'll take a picture. It's probably the last time you're going to see Tammy. <laughs> oh, I hope not. I hope not. I really do hope she comes back. Double points, people, double points. The National CPS Conference is called, is it safe travel for all children? Is it kids in motion? Is it lifesavers? Or is it advances in child injury prevention? What is the National CPS Conference called? I just want to note that Heather, you are no longer in tenth place, right in front of me. Someone else, who I shall not name, <coughs> Judy, <coughs> has fallen behind Heather in the ranking. <laughs> okay, so um, Lifesavers is a national conference, but it is not the. National CPS Conference. Lifesavers has a bunch of different highway safety tracks, including motorcycle and, and distracted and stop DWI and all that good stuff, where the Kids in Motion is specifically dedicated to child passenger safety. So is that like so, the Ohio State University? The, the, like you have Ohio the, yes, that's exactly. Uh, Jim that's exactly. Savage has worked very hard to make certain that the conference is, uh, it is the National Child Passenger Safety Conference. So nice. it is branded that way. We hope to see you in Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Go August Madison. August through the 14th. Yeah, I have to learn to say it that way though. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tutor you because apparently my my uh, upper Midwest accent is coming back the longer I'm in Ohio. I'm getting teased again now, so I don't hear it, but apparently it's there. It God must be the art. It Wisconsin. must be the artist in Wild Water. <laughs> you got so, like the I'm excited, Minnesota though. accent there. Uh, yeah, you betcha. You, you betcha. betcha. <laughs> So no, August 12th through the 14th in Madison. If you're gonna fly in, you can fly right into Madison. There's free shuttle to the uh, hotel. There's tons to do in Madison, uh, all kinds of restaurants. Uh, you can go, there's all around the lake. There's great walking. And if you're looking for some really quirky things, check out Mount Horeb and the House on the Rocks. So Mount Horeb has all, you would have to have a car to do this, but they took the old tree trunks and, uh, carve them into trolls all around the town. And then um, the house on the rocks is just a human being who had way too much money and time and like a collector of all things. If you want to see like mannequins and carousels and just, be amazed. Uh, yes. The Anyways. house on the rock, like the house itself is a, you know, architectural wonder, but the, the huge warehouses of old <laughs> O-L-D-E time, T-Y-M-E stuff, you know, is just fascinating, you know, just trinkets it's, and military yeah. things and, and old fashioned carousels. And yeah, it's amazing. Right, Mannequins cool. hanging, yeah. hanging from the ceiling. Hanging from the ceiling. Madison. Mount Horeb, that has like, I have a t-shirt, the Grumpy Old Troll Bar or whatever it's called. Yes, we've yes. had a burger and a beer <laughs> there. Yep. Or, um, <laughs> uh, Madison, for your I've never been to Wisconsin. 
it's so fun. And Madison is an isthmus because it's a land between two lakes. It's like this little stretch of land and there's two big lakes. And I learned that very young because I have family that live on one of the lakes. You can go on a awesome. scenic bike ride to New Glarus and get a spotted cow beer while you are there. Yeah. Good beer, good cheese. I was hoping my I, son I know. Would. I mean, you had me at beer and cheese, really. Like, uh, sold. Cheese curds. What about cheese curds? You, cheese yeah. Curds. The squeaky ones that are fresh, yeah. I was hoping my son would be. a great donut store called Hertz Donut. Uh, fantastic donuts. I was hoping my son would be moving into grad school right at the time of Kids in Motion in Madison. Um, that was his, one, his top choice for a long time, but ultimately he decided to go else there. But we thought there was a good chance he'd be close to home. So, um, uh, but uh, still planning to go. So nice yay. to drive. Good, good, good. I'll be. Uh, I'm renting a Winnebago and doing shuttle service from O'Hare. Um, <laughs> ah, anyone okay. who doesn't fly into Madison. Yep. Uh, I good wish day. I could go. I'm not going to be able to go this year. Oh, well, is, is there a regional airport, I assume, in Madison, or is the way to yeah, go? Yeah, there's to a fly? Madison. It's actually a pretty decent airport. It's grown a lot since uh, we were. Uh, so I lived in Madison many moons ago, and it's grown okay. a lot. There's actually more than four gates now. So, yeah. So it's not it's, fly uh, into Milwaukee and bus to Madison. But my no, oh, no, no, Madison's really easy to get into, and it's you nice. can. Uh, both United and Delta service it. Um, you can do Milwaukee. Milwaukee's like. A little over an hour. That's mm -hmm. not bad. O'Hare is not too bad. I mean, don't fly into Chicago Midway though. Your your life will be very sad. You definitely, if you're going to do Chicago, avoid O'Hare. It's just yeah. Save yourself the time. Go to Milwaukee if you if you have a nonstop to Milwaukee instead of O'Hare or to you know and connect to Madison. Yeah, do that. Yep, absolutely. All right, I'm going to be booking my plane tickets probably next week. But most of you got that right. Kids in Motion, aka Kim Conference um in august so i hope to see some or many of you there all right laney is still rocking it with jennifer and jules not far behind all right we're only on question 11. what am i <laughs> hurry up quick answer quick 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 there's one answer <laughs> <laughs> it's c the answer is c there's no C. Nice oh. try. <laughs> try again. That might be why you're in the place that you're in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is the aforementioned Baby Trend Trooper three in one convertible. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a sort of a newer product. Um, it's a little quirky, has some strange pool noodle um, guidance, which I'm not even going to go there because I don't want to be here all night. So Jules it is moving up and Carrie is on a streak with three in a row. So Carrie's back in the game. Now Baby Trend is going to file a lawsuit. We've already got a lawsuit over the Wavy Pico <laughs> seat, and we've got one over, you know, whatever the other. Hey, what did we was, say yeah. about Wavy? We didn't say we didn't say anything about Wavy. No, they were, they were just a what am I? No, no, but there All was right. an issue with the ant. Didn't you read the comments? People All right, here we go. True or false? Come on, people. Greco allows the use of a mat under their car seat. Sorry, Darren, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yes, I sorry. realized I'd, I'd hit next, and I was like, okay, I got to move it along. Never use a match under your car seat. Ever. Ever. Except if it's a Graco. It turns um, it into a death trap. Yes. So Graco is actually really lenient um, with their policy. They pretty much allow the use of any mat. They're not specific about what mats or what kind of, you know, they're just like, yeah, you can use a mat. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's guidance in every Graco manual I've ever seen. Although I don't hold me to that because there's probably some manual that doesn't say that. Um, but it's sort of just an interesting anomaly because a lot of other manufacturers either don't allow it or only allow their own mats to be used or give you guidance about specific mats that they're okay with. But Graco is pretty much like, sure, go for it, which is nice for us because right. 
That's great. Some um, manufacturers, it's like your afterlife is in question if you even consider using an aftermarket <laughs> accessory. Right, you might to use a towel. That's pretty easy. So if you get yes. a towel, you don't have to buy anything. Just put a towel in here. Correct. Yes. And now even so even has their own mats, which Thank is you. nice. So if somebody really wants a mat, um, you they you have we have a mat to sell them while Amazon does. <laughs> All right. So Lainey is still clinging to first place. Let's see. What is the most recent child restraint to be recalled? This is hard. Yeah, it's a good one. This was Darren's idea. So if any lawsuits come of this question, I'm just throwing Darren under the bus. <laughs> so have all of these seats been recalled at one time or another? Mm, no, three okay. out of the four. Yeah, I don't know about the fourth. Okay. Actually, no, I, I take that back. All of them. So it is the Dionu Cambria booster, which is the most recent to be recalled. But the Kokoro, the Kitty World Plus, and the Recaro Pro Ride have also been recalled just not recently. So today on my Google News Feed, some local WCPST news station, you know, replayed the news story of that recall from like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And so apparently other people picked it up. And so, you know, there were a few local news stations that portrayed it as being a new recall. And I'm like, oh, there's a new recall. And now it was just an old recall story being recycled. Damn, it's that Cambria again. <laughs> right. What are they what doing? Kind of, what kind of news day is that if they have to recycle a car seat? Right. Right. Oh, I know. The recall has a recall. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we really still kind of, it's a very tight neck and neck between Lainey, Jules, and Jennifer. That has not changed. So yeah. let's see. We still have a few more quickly. questions. Starting with this model year, all keyword passenger vehicles were required to have latch in at least two seating positions. Push quickly. It's D. <laughs> Correct answer is D. D, D, D. D. <laughs> a, A. No, I mean A. Yeah, watch out. Marie Elizabeth is here. She's going to come back and win. Was she the winner of our first contest, I believe? So uh, the answer is 2003. Um, Latch had a phase in period, um, but by model year 2003, 100% of vehicles um, were required to have lower semi, anchors. Semi trick question. Well done. Hmm. It just was a phase in period. So it started in two, like tethers came first and then there was a phase in period for tethers, pickup trucks and vans were the last to get tethers, pickup trucks and vans in general were the last to get, well, at least pickup trucks were probably the last to get latch. What was I do the remember first? my neighbor had a 2000 Sienna, which didn't have tethers, which was super annoying because it was a minivan. But I think like um, yeah. the 2000 Windstar had latch, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. Ford was super proactive. They started putting latch in either the 95 or 96 Windstar, even before it was required. Or tethers. Tethers, I mean, they tethers were going in first. So I think as early as 95, Ford was adding tethers to the Windstar specifically. But yeah, all right. So let's see. Uh, did this make a difference in our... Um, nope, not really. We still have Lainey, Jules, and Jennifer. All right, number 15. Which old car seat brand was recently revived with new products? Is it Nanya? <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean Narnia. 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 <laughs> Narnia Airways. <laughs> Is Team Tex still a thing in Europe or are they still around? It's still a thing in the U.S. They're still oh, manufacturing I did not know that. I have not seen one and not looked them up. So interesting. Um, yeah. So everyone, no surprise here that everyone knew it was Century. Century is back. 
Um, and Century, the, the new Century is, it's really obvious who they're marketing it to, and it's not even millennials. They're going after the Gen Z crowd who are just becoming parents now. I mean, everything about Century is, it's young, fresh, modern, hip, inclusive. I mean, just sort of hitting on all of those keywords. Um, and it's affordable too. So I'm excited for this, you know, bless you for this rebirth of an old brand. Um, and yeah, I actually haven't seen any of the products on store shelves yet. So I've just seen them in pictures, but um, I believe we should be getting some samples soon if we don't already have them. We already them. have the infant seed sample and I think the all-in-one is coming soon. Ooh. All right, very good. So stay tuned to Corsi Blog. Someone who is not Keisha will be writing that review. <laughs> <laughs> All right, true or false? A rear-facing car seat can never touch the back of the front seat. You don't want to trip that warning, warning light for the front seat. Never have it touch, ever, ever. Or maybe you can, I don't know. I'm singing Taylor Swift. We are never, ever, ever. Okay, oh, again, not, I, if I known it was just going to be you guys, I would have made the questions a lot harder. Right. But, you know, I'm trying to be inclusive in case, you know, some new people who don't know everything want to join us. I think we, we, need, we need our regular followers to start spreading the word to parents and caregivers who are not necessarily advocates. And, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're gonna Otherwise, have to have we have, yeah, we have to have to have to bring a friend. Yep. Okay. Trivia 2.0 difficulty. Mm-hmm. 17. What am I? Thank you, Jenny H., for that call out for our Mythbusters article. <laughs> am I a tribute, a symphony, a triumph, or a titan? <laughs> Carrie said her parents joined Carrie. My mom and Mason watched the beginning of last times and Mason was saying, mommy, mommy. <laughs> I love that story so much. Sarah, is it fair to say whatever am I is made in the USA? Yes. Answering for Sarah. All of those products are made in the USA. Sarah has gone still. I think she's uh, glitched out. Oh no. Yes, I think she's glitched out. Well, let me, I'm just gonna wait a minute and see. Um, Cause if she, if she disappears from the studio I may have to add her back in. At least she's got a happy look on her face. She went out in style. Right. Me, yeah. She didn't go out like with her tongue out of her mouth and her eyes closed <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> That's like the worst. It captures like the absolute worst moment for your screenshot. And oh, she's there back. she is. She's there. Oh. You left it. It was beautiful. You had it's a all good. Smile. You, you had this big, beautiful <laughs> smile on your face. So like you were frozen, but it was a good look. Because you know, usually when you're frozen, you're like, you know. I don't no. believe you at all. I think you're just being no, nice. We're no, we're being totally no, serious. Seriously. It was a cute yep. smile. Yeah. All right. It was very good. Smile. Was great. Internet. There you go. All right. So um, Darren had asked, um, are all of these products made in USA? They sure are. Tribute, Symphony, Triumph, and Titan. Right. And, and it's a Triumph, you know, which has been around probably like 10 years at least now. Um, oh, but it's still amazing. tried and true. Still, um, still a trusty product. It's a, people either have a love hate relationship with those knobs. My husband, the knobs, yeah, yeah. my husband loved it. And the next seat that I gave him was so much easier, and he hated it. And he said, What happened to the knobs? Where'd they go? I want the knobs back. Like, it's really a little easier to use. And he just he loved the knobs, so it goes both ways with those, I guess. 
The way so I remember tri- that uh, is that I always triumph getting it installed where you could still rear facing, where you could still adjust the knobs. That mm-hmm. was that's how I yes. remember the name of that model. Yes. And then there were some other products that had the knobs too, and I'm going way back in time. But there was the Apollo and the Comet, and I don't remember yes. which came before the other. Um, so maybe one of our readers or one of our you know followers right now remembers. What came first? Was it the Apollo or the Comet? But I believe both of those products, or maybe one of the two, had had the knob adjusters. Julie says Apollo. All right, let's. I okay. trust Julie. She's she's mm-hmm. really good. <laughs> so, oh oh, look at that, Jules. Yep. So now we've got Jules, Jennifer, and Lainey. So Lainey's still in it. But Jules has moved into the lead, and she's on a streak with nine in a row. And in other big Our, news, Heather is back oh, sorry. in in 10th place. True and false. True and false. A chest clip that's too low can cause internal injuries in a crash. Oh, this is a tough one. That's a good question. I'm going to answer this one and maybe try to move out of 11th place. <laughs> okay, I won't answer them. <laughs> Hashtag goals. Right. All right. So most of you got that right, but a couple of people didn't. So I think it's definitely worth having a discussion about this because this is one of those internet myths that enough people repeated and now it seems to have taken root um, as a fact. And it is definitely not a fact. And I, you know, I can let everybody else basically chime in, but I would tell you, um, I would promise you that if a chest clip being too low was in any way, shape or form able to cause an internal injury in a crash that we wouldn't have chest clips anymore or they'd be made of silicone. Um, or something like that, because that would just be way too easy to injure child to injure children, especially when we know how often parents misuse or don't place the chest clip the right way. So I just want to assure everyone that um, chest clips do not cause internal injuries. And it doesn't mean that it couldn't ever possibly because anything is possible. Um, but it, this is not really a thing. Anybody else want to chime in? I, or I we just from to Europe. On? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it just comes from Europe. I think people saw that European seats under the original European regulation didn't have chest clips and then didn't know why they didn't have chest clips. And something different is something different. And somebody made up the, well, if that's different, then this, you know, if you're not using this one right, it must be wrong. They don't have, you know, I think there's just a lot of confusion that comes out of it. But if you watch crash testing and there's some nice crash test videos in the curriculum, you can find them on the CPS board YouTube page. Um, But if you watch a crash test video, what you'll notice is when we have the dummy in the seat, properly installed forward facing, you're gonna see that chest clip slide down in a crash. I mean, it's not gonna stay positioned where it was. It's there to position the harness before the crash happens. Uh, But during, it's generally going to slide down and end up in the belly like that Mr. Skeleton with the chest clip in his belly anyway. Like that's where it's gonna end up at the end of the crash. So it's not- But starting off there to begin with does not put your child at risk. Mm -hmm. Because let's, I mean, face it. I mean, anybody who's ever had a toddler has had that experience of you arrive at your destination, go to get your child out of their seat and realize they pushed the chest clip down. Um, So as long as they're not sliding their shoulders out of the harness strap, Mm -hmm. which is usually the step after sliding it down, um, there's your child is really not at risk for internal injuries because they have played with the position of their chest clip. I just want to give a shout out to Tyreek Cervantes, who registered for the Kardashian.org forum and claimed he was in the USA, but his IP goes to Poland and he matched three stop forum spam criteria for username, email and IP address. So good try there, Tyreek. <laughs> I'm multitasking in the background. So, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, too funny. All right, let's see. Did this shake things up any further? No, we still have Jules and Jennifer in the lead, and we're getting close to the end. Um, Do we have double a double points, points question? Double points. How many different Snug Ride infant car seats are advertised on Graco's website today? Is it 206? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Is it the Snug Ride Snug Lock Super Elite DLX? Snug Fit. Extended. Yeah. With safety surround and extend to fit. Available only at this <gasps> fine retailer. Nobody got you it. Guys, no one got it right. No one got it right. Oh. The people, go to the wow. website, man, because that's what I did. Go to the website, search by car seats, filter by show me all infant car seats. There are 20. 20 snug ride infant car seats, different versions advertised on Graco's website today. Wow. Good stumper. Yeah. All right. And that was a double points question and no one got it right. So I'm thinking that the scores just aren't going to change. Someone could have uh, taken a big lead on that one. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. And then the final question, what type of child restraint, what, what, was this type of child restraint called? Uh -huh. This type of child restraint was called what? I'm I'm gunning for you, Heather. I'm going to answer this one. I'm coming for you. In tenth place. <laughs> As the recycling queen, those were the hardest to dismantle. <laughs> I will tell you oh, right really? now. Oh, they were hard to cut yeah. apart. Uh, interesting. Like, I don't think I've ever tried to. You had to have time. a uh, hacksaw to cut that T off. Mm -hmm. So almost everyone got it right. It is a T shield. And we'll see how that leaves our scores. Carrie so the podium. here's our podium. We've got Lainey in third place with 18 out of 20. Oh, Lainey has 17 out of 20. Jennifer has 18 out of 20, and our champion for today's Car Seat Blog Trivia is Julie Gregory with 17 out of 20, but um, she got some of those key clutch questions correct. So, Jules, congratulations. Um, I'll be in touch with you later on to get you your $20 Amazon gift card. Or Target or whatever else you want, because I don't really care. So <laughs> name, name your gift card. And as long as I can send it electronically, I will. So I'm going to stop sharing now. And, and I'm going to Jennifer and Lainey, um, Keisha will be giving you the name of our attorney if you have any <laughs> for the legality of He's our called <laughs> Legal Dad, and you can find him <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> he has great <laughs> advice on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So along those lines, I brought something, a little something for show and tell. So hang on. I just need to sort of push my desk away so I can make room for it. Um, as I was, I was at the office today and as I was running out of there, because I got to, had to get home and get ready for this, um, I stopped by the museum, a.k.a. the storage room where I keep all my car seats. And I was like, what can I grab? Because there was a bunch of stuff, but it was on the top shelf. And I was like, yeah, I'm not getting the ladder and climbing up there. So what's in reach that I can bring um, for show and tell today? And I found this gem, which ties in nicely with our trivia. <laughs> Ye old century tea shield. I love those harness straps. I know. Look at those. Yes. Ones. Do how? I mean, if you've been around a long time, you remember these lovely gems. I mean, you Does literally it smell just good? look. Huh? Does it smell good? It smells <laughs> fine. We actually we got this at a car seat check. Um, not last year because we didn't really do much last year, so it had to be the year before. Um, we uh, someone arrived with a child in this seat. And um, I think this was, you know, Nana's special that she probably has been saving in the attic. It's clean. It doesn't smell bad. Um, it looks like it's in good shape. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like really the good. labels look like this. And so we, you know, there's no discernible information. And um, on the back, hold on, let me try to hit the. Is the manufacture date there? No, um, no, there's not. But there is. It, I mean, it does say, it does stamp 1985 Century Product Inc. But I think that's just like a trademark. I don't think it's actually um, the date of manufacture. Um, it just use, use only upper slots for forward-facing children. See instructions. 1985 Century Products, patent pending. Um, and then, yeah, there is no other discernible information because although there were a bunch of labels most of them you can see look like this now but i feel yeah, it's like a that's gem. a mid 90s that feels mid 90s to me i i think so too the cover is very i don't know if you can let me see that that mm -hmm. blue like pattern that's like the costco the, the costco tariva cover the, mm -hmm. the I think i do think it was mid 90s i think that Keisha, the, can you hold it up again so what do you can see Custo All right, so it's a century, cover. and then yeah. that's that's the yeah. He's saying yeah, that mid to late nineties. Ninety six, ninety seven, exactly. If you'd like to know from Woody, <laughs> Danielle says her nephew had it in ninety three. Oh, okay. ninety three, somebody. Okay, I mean it's possible. This blue velour pattern was, you know, pretty popular. I think throughout the nineties. And I mean, it's still in really good shape. I mean, you can see that, you know, some some loving Nana probably stored it in the attic from, you know, when her son used it in 1995 or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find uh, it later on eBay. Needless to say, that child went home in a different seat. Mm -hmm. um, and the students, because it was actually one of our end of class check events. Um, and half the class was like, Oh my God, I think I had that car seat when I was a kid. So uh, it, you know, it was, you know, it was a trip down Keisha, memory lane for a lot of our students. With all the shortages, you know, like Pokemon cards and graphics cards for computers, you might get a thousand dollars for that thing. Mm -hmm. um, once upon a time, there were, um, I'm guessing they were manufacturers the NHTSA required certain seats for certain testing and they were like really old obscure seats. And if you put one on eBay, it would like literally go for a thousand dollars, even though it was like a joy ride or something because NHTSA specified it had to be a joy ride and you couldn't get joy rides because they've been discontinued for 15 years. Um, and it was really funny. Um, because, yeah, you would see them pop up and then you would see bidding wars over these really old discontinued seats. And, you you know, and everyone was like, why is this happening? And I'm like, because people really need that particular seat. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's I don't think I'm going to have any such luck with this um, century. What did I say it was? Was it a 1500? Um, it doesn't even say. It but, 2000? So actually, look what's here. It doesn't necessarily date to the seat itself, but on the back of the harness webbing, mm -hmm. it's IMMI, and it says December of 95. Hmm. Oh. So it has to be at least, I guess, December of 95, because otherwise it wouldn't have that little tag on the... Um, attached to the splitter plate. But yeah, good times. So I'm curious for those of us who are joining you, or joining you, no, joining us, um, did you have a car seat as a child? And if so, do you remember what it was? I'm going to take the fifth on this. I'm feeling targeted <laughs> here. I don't have a car seat. So if you had a car seat, you're doing better than I was. Yeah. We did. I don't know if there's pictures of us with the infant seat. So I was 82. Um, I don't know that there's a picture of me in an infant seat, but I've definitely seen pictures in a, as a very young child, probably under one forward facing in something that was either, I feel like it was an overhead shield. Um, I've seen that. I also have great pictures. My brother was 1990, 
and probably using the same seat. Who knows? I mean, my dad's out there, but he's not going to remember. But there's cute pictures of my mom made this really adorable, you know, very Etsy worthy uh, dinosaur print cover to put over the car seat. So it's over really the vinyl. Cute. Oh, yeah. Over the vinyl. Cute little dinosaur. Probably the same car seat my sister and I used in the 80s. So I can confirm that with her later. And maybe next time I'll bring the picture because it's really cute. But shame on yeah. mom. But you know what? You had a car seat in 1982. That's amazing yeah. because, I mean, New York had the first car seat law, and that was 84. So before it was a law in any state, your parents loved you enough to buy you a car seat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't have any such thing. But what I did have, and I've said this in, in past live streams, I had this. I had <laughs> the mom yep. belt. You know, riding shotgun in the front seat, totally unrestrained. Mom has to hit the brake. The arm goes up. You know, so I was well protected. <laughs> yes, the brown one in the shiny metal frame Jenny's talking about. That sounds familiar from the pictures I've seen. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah. It, it's really just, it's interesting how just in 30 or 40 years, I mean, even just thinking about... <laughs> Car seats in the mid 90s, mm -hmm. you know, when most states did have laws and, you know, at least most people were on board with using them for the first couple of years. Um, how, how, what's the word I'm looking at, like how basic and how, and I think really it was a product of money or lack of money because nobody would spend a lot of money for a car seat back then. So I think you were very limited if you were an engineer because you could have the greatest idea in the world and you'd go to your boss and say, I have this great idea. I can make it do this, that, and the other thing. And your boss would be like, okay, well, how much is that gonna cost? And you would tell them and they'd be like, yeah, nobody's gonna buy that. So I think it wasn't, I think Britax was the first, and I'm, I always say Britax. So if any Britax people are out there, don't sue me. I'm always just going to say Britax. But Britax really was the first um, in the late 90s to come out with expensive, you know, $200 car seats. And I was fortunate enough to have a Britax roundabout in 1997. It was one of the first roundabouts. And I still remember, like, with clarity, people telling me that I was crazy, crazy. For having yeah. a two hundred dollar car seat, why? Why would now? Granted, we didn't spend that money. It was baby's first birthday. All the aunties chipped in, and I got this nice, expensive car seat for Christmas, um, which I was super happy about. But they were willing to spend the money, and quite frankly, I probably would have been too if they weren't so generous in chipping in for his birthday. But people thought you were crazy. Yeah, for I was spending two hundred dollars on a car seat. Absolutely, because I couldn't get anything else to fit in my Saturn, and so <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. One eighty nine ninety nine, and you know, I don't know where I purchased it. Babies are us, probably, but um, it worked. So I'm and with you, Jared. You? I remember asking my first training, like a five hour training, and I said, "Well, what should I do?" You know, my kid is uh, nine months, and he was quickly approaching twenty pounds. And they looked at me and they said, "Stay home." That's your option. <laughs> I was like, okay. Because <laughs> I wanted to keep them rear facing to a year. And how guilty I felt when I had to turn them forward facing at yeah. 11 months yeah. because there was nothing and nothing would I mean, fit in the cars. Nothing yeah. would fit rear facing. At least you made it to 11 months, right? I mean, I remember my, my best friend's daughter who was born in 94, who was 22 pounds at four months wow. old. Yeah. I mean, this girl, she was just, she was, I mean, she had more roles in a bakery. She was just one of those oh. Michelin man oh, babies yeah. with rolls Fish. upon rolls. And she was so cute. But we, I, I don't think, I don't know if we have any pictures. I don't have any pictures, but I do remember her forward facing at four months old in not a T-shield, but probably an overhead shield. Because she was over 22 pounds in, yeah. in 1994. That was that was your only option. That was it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's looking back, that's terrifying. You're 11-month-old, even though that's obviously not great. <laughs> but, I mean, a four-month-old forward-facing is just he's like. He's healthy now. It's okay. And he's in transportation safety, even better. Yay! So <laughs> Make a mama proud. You got it. You got it. Um, so Judy was saying that her son forward-faced at nine months because 20 pounds was the max for rear-facing. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, how far yeah. we've come just since our children, mm -hmm. you know. So it's very exciting times in child passenger safety. And I, I say this all the time, but I'm just so grateful to be along for the ride. Hey, Keisha. Mm. Can I share my screen? Um, I don't think so. I can There's only share. I found. I, I can share, but I I can only share my screen. But if you oh, there's I'm a share it. icon down there. Can you see it? Yeah. Sir? yeah, but it's just for me to share my screen. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if you can, is well, it something I'm, that you I'm, could email me and then I could bring it up on my computer and then share it? Hold on. Is that working? Did that work? Pirate work? Minds want to know. No. 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 All right. I'll Is it something you can link to? Uh, no, I just randomly found it on the computer. <laughs> I was like, um, I know it's here someplace. I've used it before. Okay. Um, so Jenny said that she read a study that said that hospital loaner program seats made car seats popular and they normalized going home in a car seat. Maybe. Um, that's quite possible. I mean, it was definitely before my time. I do know that New York was the first with a car seat law in 84. I don't know how, Tennessee how long was it first. Really? Yes. 1978, it passed and went into law in 1979. Proud Tennessean right here. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's oh, like I didn't know that. I, really, I always thought that we were the first in the nation. So maybe we were the first with like seatbelt law or something like that. And maybe yeah. I'm just misremembering but good for tennessee um there was a uh, Dr. robert sanders i believe his name was he was called dr seatbelt he was a pediatrician and he was super influential in getting that uh car seat law passed well, uh, yeah i have a book from him and didn't he get a life uh lifesavers like uh award yeah, we an award in tennessee and i think we did a national one too uh, yeah. And I believe we put him into the MACPS Hall of Fame as well. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, 78. I mean, gosh, it was slim pickings for car seats in 78. You know, I mean, we did have federal safety standards because I don't remember what year it was, but I know it was in the 70s that NHTSA finally intervened and decided that these things ought to be able to pass some sort of crash test. Um, because otherwise they were just baby holders. <laughs> and so whatever year that was, and maybe that was 76, I don't know, 76 comes to mind, but I could be wrong. Um, and then we started to get, and I imagine that there were a lot of seats in the beginning that didn't test well or didn't pass testing, but that's when manufacturers got more serious. And then when you had Ford and GM get in the game with things like the Love Seat and what was the Ford one called? The Tot board tot it was like that big shield thing right i know what you're talking about tot, yeah ford tot something i don't remember what it was called but that and the gm love seat um you know really put child passenger safety on the map and it's just much like cell phone technology and computer technology it's just amazing to see how far we've come in 45 40 or 45 years it's just it's almost ridiculous um and how much further we're going to go until we're all driving autonomous vehicles and cars don't crash anymore. And then the kids can just go back to jumping around the back of the right. station wagon. Then mom and dad can be like tossing newborn back and forth like we and yeah. Yeah. Or we can put our kids back in the front seat again. There was something really awesome about having a rear facing kid in the passenger seat right next to you you're driving and your baby is right 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 there Kids can you know sleep on and the you can just touch shelf. them and you know find a lost binky and you weren't like doing this in the back seat all the time so that's my goal is that we we get to the point where we just don't have to worry about crashing and then road trips can be less about you know restraint and more just about you know jumping around the back seat and telling 18 wheelers to do this 
And it happens eventually. You know, in 2000, there was the promise that Latch was going to solve all of the car seat woes. And it only took, you know, what, uh, 15 years for all those weight limit issues to kind of go away. But eventually they did kind of go away. And so we slowly but surely, we make progress. But Keisha, if all of the 18 wheelers are auto autonomous, can we go like this anymore? Is that oh. even yeah, well, they're just going to have to work that in somehow. There'll be like an app for it. Where Could you incorporate that the into the sensor safe stuff that you're working on, please? Yeah. The, like the cameras, you know, the, the, all, the, all the semis will have to have cameras to detect their surroundings. So if they see someone doing that, they'll just automatically trigger the horn. Yeah. 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 I mean, that was like, that was, that was the essential, that was an essential part of a road trip as kids was just, you know, and being so happy every time they saw you and they complied with your wishes. So right. because back then it was like, how many different states license plates can we see on the trip? And today it's like, <laughs> wait, you're missing the headphones. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, listen, it's already after nine and we've been at this for almost two hours. So I'm going to thank our lovely, entertaining, fabulous guests um, for joining us today. You guys are welcome right. back right anytime. Over there. Yes. Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, I, can't. Oh, I always mix this up. <laughs> <laughs> we have to look. Um, <laughs> the Brady Bunch look. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you all. Thank you all to everyone who joined us for trivia today. And thank you to our wonderful guests for agreeing to be our wonderful guests today. And we hope that you'll join us. <laughs> Welcome, Matt, is out anytime. Take a picture oh. of Tammy because, you know. <laughs> you didn't scare me away. I'll come back if you want to come back. <laughs> yep. you're, now, you I, are now I know what I'm getting into. <laughs> you are officially invited to our holiday or holiday, our Hollywood Squares event. Awesome. Yes. All right. Yes. Welcome and to your Woody. holiday event, too. That, you know, right. I'm, I'm always for a but if we party. do Hollywood Squares, you need to drag Woody into it because yeah. I feel like no Hollywood Squares would be complete without Woody. Um, I, I'll work on that. You, know, <laughs> I, I, you guys may have a better chance of convincing him, probably Sarah H., than I would uh, have of convincing him. He, he just Can said Woody not happening. Like a, and he he, he can't even hear what we're impression. talking about. I'll work on it. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Right, I hope Bye to see everyone. everyone in person at Kids in Motion. Thank you again to all our guests and thanks for playing along with our trivia game. Always great to see you guys. Peace Thank out. You. Peace Bye. out. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys.